Good afternoon and welcome to the 2021 Retail Food Seminar. I hope you're enjoying it so far. I want to start off by thanking everyone, including the organizers, the presenters, and AFTO, who handled all the technological aspects of this event. Pulling this event together was no small feat. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Elizabeth O'Malley, and I am one of the three retail food branch directors within the Office of State Cooperative Programs. My branch covers from Maine to Florida, as well as Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. My presentation will focus on the Office of State Cooperative Programs, which is the field component of FDA's National Retail Food Team. Our office is best recognized for our work with our retail food specialists, who are our liaisons to the state, local, tribal, and territorial jurisdictions across the country. So my presentation today is going to focus a bit on who we are, what we do, and how we've adapted and what lies ahead. So who are we? This is the current organizational chart for the Office of State Cooperative Programs. We are fortunate to be led by Lori Farmer, who many of you know very well. The Retail Food Division has three branches, but we function as a true national team. The other two directors are Kim Destromp and Chris Smith, another name you are probably very familiar with. Here are the retail food specialists within the Office of State Cooperative Programs. The retail food specialists are the linchpin of our division. They are the engine behind everything we do, and I've never worked with a more committed and hardworking group of professionals in my career. Most of you know Dan Reddit, Donna Winucha, and Cameron Wiggins, who are shown in the first row as they work directly with your jurisdictions. For those of you who don't know, Diane Kelsch, who worked with Florida for many years, recently transferred and is now working with California. Here's a graphic of where our specialists are located across the country. At full staff, we have 27 specialists, but currently we have 23. We are actively working to fill our vacancies, including the four food specialist positions and a division director. So when I think about the Office of State Cooperative Programs, three things immediately come to mind. The first two are related. We are all about working in partnership and collaboration with our stakeholders, both internally and externally. There are so many involved in retail food protection in this country, and no one can do it alone. We fully recognize that that within our office, and we work hard to partner and collaborate with many different entities. We recognize the need to leverage each other's resources and expertise to prevent and reduce foodborne illness. In addition, since OSCP has such a limited number of staff, we rely on a concept called the multiplier effect to most effectively achieve our goals and objectives. When asked what the multiplier effect is, I often describe it as teaching people to fish rather than giving them a meal. But for those of you who are social media users, it's really like tweeting and retweeting. But either way, it is about providing a small group of people with the information and the tools they need with the aim of distributing it to others that also need it. Some of the activities we effectively use the multiplier effect for are our standardizations, our training courses, and the program standards mentorship program. One way we collaborate is to work with other internal components. As many of you have heard us uh, call ourselves, we are the FDA's national retail food team. Our team is actually comprised of four components, separate and from each other within FDA, all working towards our common mission of reducing foodborne illness. The four components include my office, the Office of State Cooperative Programs, CIFSAN, the Office of Partnerships, and the Office of Training, Education, and Development. Over the course of the last two years, the National Retail Food Team has worked to put together a five-year retail food protection strategic plan that outlines the strategic mission, vision, goals, objectives, and strategies for the program. The FDA received and considered stakeholder feedback when developing this plan. The development of the plan was truly a collective effort of both internal and external stakeholders. As stated, the strategic plan outlines the strategic mission, vision, goal, objectives, and strategies. The success of the national program will be reflected in our ability to work towards our goals and objectives with our stakeholders. The strategic goal of the NRFT, as stated on this slide, 
is to reduce the occurrence of foodborne illness risk factors in retail food and food service establishments. To support this goal, the team developed three strategic objectives, and they are to increase the uniformity, consistency, and capacity of our state, local, tribal, and territorial retail food protection programs, promote industry's active managerial control of foodborne illness risk factors, and promote a culture of food safety, and to maintain a national retail food team workforce. Corresponding with each of these strategic objectives are strategies or steps the national team will take to achieve these objectives. It's important to note that the National Retail Food Team Strategic Plan is in alignment with the efforts underway by the Retail Food Safety Regulatory Association Collaborative and the agency's new era for Smarter Food Safety Initiative that you heard about earlier this week. All three have touch points and core elements three and four of the new era initiative which speak to new business models and retail modernization and food safety culture directly align with the work and the technical assistance provided by our retail food specialists. We are all working together on many initiatives, including fostering, supporting, and promoting a food safety culture, developing a national strategy to promote complete food code adoption, identifying, assessing, and promoting intervention strategies that impact behavior changes that will result in a reduction of the occurrence of foodborne illness risk factors and taking steps to truly modernize retail food safety. Working together in synergy and partnership will help us reduce the burden of foodborne illness in this country. So one way we have adapted in the last year is to really use technology to continue and help us with our work. In FY21, our specialists work with OTED and the association partners to convert courses to a virtual format. And we delivered 48 retail food courses. And we will continue to do so in FY22, hoping to deliver 50. Virtual platforms were also successfully used for the annual educational conferences for APTO, NIHA, and NACHO, as well as for the recent conference for food protection. And this seminar is just another example of how we successfully transformed ourselves and adapted. Going forward into 2022, we hope to have two self-assessment verification audit workshops, one in conjunction with NEHA's AEC and the other in the Southeast area. We recognize the importance of continuing to offer this workshop in a face-to-face -face format. However, knowing the increased demand for the workshop and the uncertainty of the current environment, we are developing the workshop into a virtual format and we hope to complete it in about a year. I wanna give a shout out to our own Jason Reagan for providing a testimonial supporting the workshop, as well as describing the value he has gained from using retail food program standards. Thank you, Jason. This summer, the FDA released its report on a study of foodborne illness risk factors in retail food store deli departments. This study is a part of a 10 year initiative that examines when foodborne illness risk factors occur and their relationship to food safety management systems and certified food protection managers. Data for this study was collected during 2015-2016. Earlier this week, you heard from Mike Nordis who described the results. But in summary, the analysis of the study data showed deadly departments had the best control over ensuring no bare hand contact with ready to eat food and cooking raw animal foods to the required temperatures. In contrast, the most common food safety behaviors and practices that still need con better control are ensuring employees use proper hand washing, holding foods requiring refrigeration at the proper temperatures, and cooling foods properly. Our food specialists are available to offer additional information about the study and its results, as well as provide presentations about the findings. The food specialists are also gearing up to do the next round of data collection in delis, hopefully starting October 1st. We would truly appreciate your support as we embark on this critically important work. And finally, I want to applaud everyone for being so adaptable and dedicated over the last 19 months. When the pandemic hit, our personal and professional lives were uprooted and changed in ways we never imagined. However, the retail food industry stepped up during these tough times to ensure that we had food to eat. Many had to completely change their business models, often delivering food directly to our doors. And our state, local, territorial, 
tribal regulatory partners work tirelessly alongside industry to ensure food safety is paramount, even going so far as to uncover new innovations like virtual inspections to ensure social distancing and safety while remaining vigilant. To all, I am truly appreciative. And also I would like to acknowledge our states affected by the recent hurricanes to let them know that we are thinking about them. Thank you to everyone.